My mother-in-law, Effie, said to me, if you don't go on the trip I planned, you're no longer part of this family. Since you married my son, you should understand this. It's just common sense. She looked at my husband, Cody, for support. I stopped Cody, who seemed ready to say something, and agreed to her demand. Effie added, marrying someone so clueless is such a hassle. If you don't come, it's divorce. I'll teach you how to behave from now on. I was tired of her absurd comments, but I didn't realize this would be my last trip with my in-laws. I'm Liliana, 32 years old, and I run a small app development company that I love. My husband Cody is 37 and works at a bank. We are both passionate about our jobs and often talk about work for hours, sometimes until morning. Cody understands my work and we share household chores. We love our work so much that even after four years of marriage, we don't have kids yet, although we hope to someday. My family runs an auto parts factory started by my dad, now managed by my brother. Their support has allowed me to pursue my dream of starting my own app company. Even though our industries are different, I often consult with my brother and dad, and they are always supportive. Cody's family also runs a small factory. Being an only child, Cody was expected to take over, but he chose banking instead because the factory wasn't doing well, and his father, Andy, was considering closing it. Cody got interested in banking as a child after meeting a kind and impressive banker who helped his dad. Cody worked hard to become a banker and now works at a major bank. On the surface, our marriage seems fine, but it's not going well. Effie doesn't think much of my job because I can work from home. She sees it as a frivolous job and doesn't understand it at all. I get it. For older generations like our parents, my job is hard to grasp. Even though I can work remotely, my job can be exhausting. I always adjust my work schedule around the in-laws' plans so I never inconvenience them, but it's frustrating that they think remote work is easy just because it's flexible. Effie also disapproves of other things about our life. We built our house halfway between our parents' homes, and it takes less than 30 minutes to reach either house. As a dual-income couple, we manage our spending and savings separately, value our independence and privacy, and contribute a fixed amount for living expenses each month. Effie doesn't like this either. She thinks it's wrong for a couple to have privacy and secrets, and she doesn't consider us a true family. I believe Effie dislikes me and finds fault in everything I do. She adores Cody and sees me as a nuisance. Every time we meet, she makes snide remarks about us not having children yet. It's a sensitive topic for me, and I'd rather not be reminded. Childbearing is a delicate topic, and it's usually polite to avoid it. Effie brings up the topic of having children every time we meet, so I've started to avoid her. To avoid worrying Cody, I've been staying late at work on purpose. Effie has done many surprising things, but there was one incident I couldn't forgive. It happened on the day of my best friend's wedding. After her wedding, my friend was moving abroad, so we wouldn't be able to meet as often. I was really looking forward to celebrating her big day. However, a week before the wedding, Andy came to me with a request. He had an important business reception and wanted me there. Naturally, I refused. The only thing more important than my friend's wedding would be a parent on their deathbed. That night, when I got home from work, my in-laws were at our house. As soon as she saw me, Effie confronted me angrily. Liliana, what are you thinking? Refusing Andy's request is outrageous. You're my son's wife. It's only natural to prioritize family obligations. Your refusal is unacceptable. You need to rethink your priorities, she yelled. Cody was there too, but he said nothing. After asking, I found out the reception was critical for the future of the company. To me, my best friend's wedding was just as important. I told Effie, I understand what you both are saying, but my best friend's wedding is an important event for me and I don't want to miss it. Besides, I'm not even an employee of Andy's company. Even Cody chimed in, can't you make an exception this time? This is really about the survival of the company. I'm going to, and it's a family effort. We can make it up to you for missing the wedding. It's a family crisis, can't you help us? I was shocked. I never thought Cody would say such a thing. He knew how much I was looking forward to the wedding. Then Andy spoke, I understand Liliana's point, but this time we really need your help. The atmosphere made it hard for me to refuse. It wasn't just any reception. In the end, I reluctantly agreed to skip my best friend's wedding. I told my friend the truth and explained why I couldn't come. Given that I had previously talked to her about my family situation, she understood my predicament. In fact, she was more concerned about me. I'm fortunate to have such a kind friend. I felt guilty for missing her big day, but once the decision was made, 
I had to focus on making the reception a success. On the day of the event, Cody and I arrived at the venue early and tried to contact Effie. However, for some reason, Effie didn't answer her phone. As I worried about what to do, the in-laws finally arrived at the venue just 10 minutes before it was set to start. To my surprise, they were in a disheveled state with messy hair and wrinkled suits and shirts. I was shocked and asked, Effie, what happened? What's with your shirt? Today is an important reception, right? She awkwardly responded, I just overslept. Liliana, make sure you're not rude. I was so close to snapping back with, I don't want to hear that from you, but somehow I managed to hold back. I really want to give myself credit for keeping my composure. During the reception, Effie, not knowing how to converse properly, made a series of rude comments to our guests. She meant them as jokes, but their strained smiles made it clear they weren't well received. As expected, we didn't secure the contract, and the reception ended without success. I thought to myself that it was to be expected. If I had known it would be like this, I would have preferred to go to my best friend's wedding. I was infuriated at being dragged into such a disastrous reception, ruining my plans and causing issues with the in-laws. To my dismay, they didn't acknowledge any wrongdoing. According to them, after such a lavish reception with no contract, it's almost like dealing with con artists. Good thing we didn't make a deal with such strange people, they said. I was speechless with astonishment. How can they be so blissfully unaware? After this incident, I became even more uncomfortable with my in-laws and started avoiding them. Unfortunately, there's something I can't avoid. Cody's family has a tradition of going on a family trip every year since his childhood, and it has continued even after we got married. Since our marriage, I've been expected to join these trips. Effie brings up the topic of having children every time we meet, so I've started to avoid her. To avoid worrying Cody, I've been staying late at work on purpose. Effie has done many surprising things, but there was one incident I couldn't forgive. It happened on the day of my best friend's wedding. After her wedding, my friend was moving abroad, so we wouldn't be able to meet as often. I was really looking forward to celebrating her big day. However, a week before the wedding, Andy came to me with a request. He had an important business reception and wanted me there. Naturally, I refused. The only thing more important than my friend's wedding would be a parent on their deathbed. That night, when I got home from work, my in-laws were at our house. As soon as she saw me, Effie confronted me angrily. Liliana, what are you thinking? Refusing Andy's request is outrageous. You're my son's wife. It's only natural to prioritize family obligations. Your refusal is unacceptable. You need to rethink your priorities, she yelled. Cody was there too, but he said nothing. After asking, I found out the reception was critical for the future of the company. To me, my best friend's wedding was just as important. I told Effie, I understand what you both are saying, but my best friend's wedding is an important event for me and I don't want to miss it. Besides, I'm not even an employee of Andy's company. Even Cody chimed in, can't you make an exception this time? This is really about the survival of the company. I'm going to, and it's a family effort. We can make it up to you for missing the wedding. It's a family crisis, can't you help us? I was shocked. I never thought Cody would say such a thing. He knew how much I was looking forward to the wedding. Then Andy spoke. I understand Liliana's point, but this time we really need your help. The atmosphere made it hard for me to refuse. It wasn't just any reception. In the end, I reluctantly agreed to skip my best friend's wedding. I told my friend the truth and explained why I couldn't come. Given that I had previously talked to her about my family situation, she understood my predicament. In fact, she was more concerned about me. I'm fortunate to have such a kind friend. I felt guilty for missing her big day, but once the decision was made, I had to focus on making the reception a success. On the day of the event, Cody and I arrived at the venue early and tried to contact Effie. However, for some reason, Effie didn't answer her phone. As I worried about what to do, the in-laws finally arrived at the venue just 10 minutes before it was set to start. To my surprise, they were in a disheveled state with messy hair and wrinkled suits and shirts. I was shocked and asked, Effie, what happened? What's with your shirt? Today is an important reception, right? She awkwardly responded, I just overslept. Liliana, make sure you're not rude. I was so close to snapping back with, I don't want to hear that from you but somehow I managed to hold back. I really want to give myself credit for keeping my composure. During the reception, Effie, not knowing how to converse properly, made a series of rude comments to our guests. 
She meant them as jokes, but their strange smiles made it clear they weren't well received. As expected, we didn't secure the contract, and the reception ended without success. I thought to myself that it was to be expected. If I had known it would be like this, I would have preferred to go to my best friend's wedding. I was infuriated at being dragged into such a disastrous reception, ruining my plans and causing issues with the in-laws. To my dismay, they didn't acknowledge any wrongdoing. According to them, after such a lavish reception with no contract, it's almost like dealing with con artists. Good thing we didn't make a deal with such strange people, they said. I was speechless with astonishment. How can they be so blissfully unaware? After this incident, I became even more uncomfortable with my in-laws and started avoiding them. Unfortunately, there's something I can't avoid. Cody's family has a tradition of going on a family trip every year since his childhood, and it has continued even after we got married. Since our marriage, I've been expected to join these trips. But I'm always stuck with the chores and driving. Arranging hotels, booking meals, and researching tourist spots. All these tedious tasks are my responsibility. If I dare to voice my opinion, I'm immediately shut down with don't overstep. Even when we visit tourist spots, I'm often left to stay in the room, never getting to visit places I like. Honestly, I dread these annual family trips and always hope I might fall ill on the day. Now, this year's trip season has arrived. Despite their claims of being financially tight, my in-laws insist on a lavish trip as usual. I was tasked with finding the hotel. I plan meticulously to keep Effie, who's always complaining, in a good mood. Since I'm the only one who doesn't drink, I'm the default driver. I don't mind this as it spares me from their conversations. However, a crisis occurred just before the trip. I received news that my mom had collapsed and was in critical condition. In such a situation, going on a trip, even a short one, was out of the question. I lost my composure, thinking I needed to see my mom as soon as possible. It was the day before the trip, so I decided to cancel and started preparing to go to the hospital. Cody offered to come to the hospital with me, but I refused. I felt like he was implying my mom wouldn't make it, which I didn't want to hear. When Cody and I went to tell Effie we couldn't join the trip, she exploded in anger. You're saying you can't go on the trip I planned. If you don't come, you're no longer family. As my son's wife, it's common sense to prioritize the family trip, right? Right, Cody. Effie said this. Seeking agreement from Cody, Effie interrupted Cody, who looked like he wanted to say something, as if to say she wouldn't entertain any opposing opinions. In that situation, I was so dumbfounded that I couldn't find the words to speak. Nothing could be more important than being with my mom in her critical condition. Just as I was about to respond, my brother called. It seems mom's condition is serious but a bit stable. I expressed my desire to rush to her, but he said visiting is impossible right now due to a contagious disease outbreak. He mentioned that if she recovers, we could arrange a short visit later, so there was no point in coming immediately. Hearing this, I hesitated about what to do. Noticing my indecision, my brother asked what was wrong. I honestly explained the situation about the trip and my current dilemma. My brother, a bit angry, made a good suggestion. I hadn't thought of it in my distress, but the trip destination was near my parents' home. He assured me that I could quickly get to my family's house from the hotel if needed and there shouldn't be any problem. Indeed, that's true. If I can't visit the hospital, staying at home or at the hotel doesn't make much difference. Accepting my brother's suggestion, I told Effie, All right, I'll go on the trip. Effie responded, Goodness, if you had said that from the start, I wouldn't have had to get angry. It's hard to marry someone so naive. As long as you understand, if you don't come, it's divorce. Honestly, I'll have to re-educate you from now on. Cody looked surprised, but we agreed to go on the condition that I could leave for the hospital if needed. Effie remarked, it would be trouble if our driver suddenly disappeared, right? Oh good, you're part of this family now, so our needs come first. Remember your role as my son's wife. This is a major event. The family trip should be your top priority. Her triumphant attitude and obvious excitement really irked me. But to avoid further trouble, I decided to endure it. On the day of the trip, I was so worried about mom that I couldn't put down my phone, yet Effie was drinking beer from the morning. The back seat of my car, which I was driving, turned into a party scene. I was surprised to see Cody joining in the drinking. However, this was a trip for which everyone had rearranged their schedules. I told myself that it would be nice if everyone could enjoy the trip since we had all made the effort to come. During the trip, Effie's whims were relentless, demands to stop for the bathroom immediately or to go to the grocery store for more alcohol. 
I felt like a servant, but I was prepared to endure such things. That's when my mobile phone rang. It was a call from my brother, thankfully informing me that mom had survived. Her condition had stabilized and she had regained consciousness. The diagnosis was subarachnoid hemorrhage. However, I couldn't be completely at ease yet as there were concerns about potential after effects. It was reassuring to have my brother keeping me updated as I was feeling anxious. When I shared the news of my mom's recovery with my in-laws, Effie commented, If she's better, there's no need to bother us with such news. You're making a big deal out of nothing. Then Andy added, Exactly. No need to spoil our trip with such grim news. We're supposed to be enjoying ourselves. I was disgusted that Andy shared Effie's view and didn't want to think of these people as my family. During the trip, it made a ruckus in the hotel, drinking and partying, which was truly embarrassing. This incident deepened my distress of my in-laws. Thankfully, mom's condition remained stable and there was no need to rush to the hospital, allowing us to complete the trip and return home. I was relieved. While I was sorting out the laundry, Effie came to our house. Wondering what it could be this time, she said, You have a dryer at your house, right? We don't have one, so let me use it, and showed up with loads of laundry. I was exasperated and replied, There's a laundromat with dryers. I have laundry of my own, and I'm using it right now, so it's not possible. She retorted, Always so stingy. Once you're done, it's fine. I'll come to pick it up tomorrow. Leave it finished by then and attempted to leave her laundry in our washroom. Cody stepped in, go to a laundromat. Liliana is tired, and she has to work tomorrow. It's not possible. Effie got angry, feeling her son was defending me. She left in a hurry, spewing insults and slamming the door, leaving the laundry behind. In hindsight, if things had been different that day, maybe the course of events would have changed later. Effie returned and said, During the trip, I realized something. Liliana, you lack the awareness of being married to Cotty. We might face similar situations in the future. Since we couldn't discuss it, I decided that Liliana should make a decision. She put a family contract and divorce papers on the table. I was speechless. What even is a family contract? It was ridiculous and confirmed my belief that she can't have a normal conversation. The saving grace was Cotty's reaction. He said, I have something to say. If you keep imposing your biased views on us, I'll cut ties. I can't deal with this anymore. What do you think Liliana is? She's not your servant or housekeeper. You're the one who's mistaken about your position. Effie was stunned. Until now, Cody had hardly ever opposed anything. It wasn't because he agreed with Effie's ideas, but rather he kept quiet to avoid the hassle. Following Cody's words, Effie's anger turned towards me. You've changed Cody since marrying him. He used to be so sweet. It's crazy for him to talk to me like that. You must have brainwashed him. Turn him back to the old Cody, she accused, confronting me. She believed I had brainwashed Cody into defying her. Then Cody spoke up for me. The one doing the brainwashing is you, always going on a rampage without listening to anyone's opinion. Frankly, you're a toxic parent. You never let me do what I wanted to after getting married. Instead of calming down, you started spewing your venom at Liliana. Enough is enough. I'm not going to divorce, and if you have a problem, you should stay out of our lives. Hearing this, Effie turned to Andy, who was with her, and burst into tears. Andy responded, If that's what Cody thinks, then fine. We'll cut ties, do whatever you want, and stormed out. I was surprised but happy that Cody stood up for us like that. Feeling frustrated, I told my brother about this. He became furious, saying he couldn't stay silent if they were acting this way. He decided to take action, which led to a tragedy in the in-law's family. It turns out my brother's company was a client of my in-law's company. We had kept our family's company name a secret to avoid creating a power imbalance. The in-laws had no idea they were dealing with my family's company, but with things as they were, we couldn't continue like this. Though I had been patient, avoiding mixing business and personal matters, it had reached its limit. My brother had been having issues with them not meeting deadlines. You can't cherish those who don't cherish you, he said. I discussed it with Cody before talking to the in-laws, and he agreed. Cody also said he had had enough. My brother ended the contract with the in-laws company. It was a business decision. They had been a problematic company, not paying on time and missing deadlines. But we had tolerated it because it was Cody's family's business. There was no longer a need for that. Later, when my in-laws found out about this, they came to us in tears. Now, they're constantly apologizing. They pleaded with my brother to reconsider the contract, but of course, that was impossible. 
that was their responsibility for not meeting deadlines, they should have been grateful for our patience. Cody explained everything to his parents, but they refused to accept it and ended up cutting ties in a rage. Cody wasn't sad. He felt relieved. He had been torn and tired, struggling between us and his family. Since then, we've been living peacefully. I learned that Cody had been supporting his family financially, but he stopped that now. The in-laws factory went bankrupt. Even without this incident, it was on the brink of closure, drowning in debt. I heard that Cody had been paying for those annual trips, and it's astonishing how they could behave that way using someone else's money. Now, the in-laws are living modestly, and Effie has recently started working. I was honestly surprised to see her, who used to call herself a president's wife, working. One day, I saw Effie being scolded while doing a cleaning job. I felt bad for thinking this was karma. She'll learn the harsh realities of society and hopefully straighten up. As for us, work is going well. We haven't had children yet, but we enjoy our jobs and life is fulfilling. We're planning an overseas trip for our next vacation. For a while, we're thinking of enjoying life without children.